Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about 10 Magic the Gathering cards that have gone up in price. There are some obvious ones here, but also some that you may not have noticed until now. So let's start with Gideon of Trials. After the new legendary rule where you can have multiple Gideons out at the same time, obviously this creates the Gideon deck. This gives the Gideon deck kind of an edge because you can stack different types of Gideons. Now you can't have two of them out at the same time, but if you had other Gideons, uh, Gideon Allies and Zendikar out at the same time, it would be very, very good. Now the Gideon deck did not actually have an impact in Standard, and that's kind of interesting to note because you have Standard is much, much weaker as a format than Modern, and you already had Gideon Allies and Zendikar at the time, one of the best Gideons, if not the best Gideon. So interesting to note. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the Dragon Lords. So, Dromoka is the one that has gone up the most, but there is four other Dragon Lords. There is Silmagar, I think he's a black blue one. I don't know if he's gone up in price. There is the Kolgon. And there, what else is there? There's Kolgon, Slimgar. I'm missing a few. Oh, and then the really fast one. So if you were interested in the dragons, I would probably just buy the cheapest one and hope it becomes more meta. That's why when you see one card go up in price, but the card is part of a set, especially a mythic set, buy the cheapest one. You don't know what is going to go up, especially if they're land, like shock lands and fetch lands. You don't know which fetch, like Verdant Catacombs is I believe as expensive as the blue ones right now because Death Shadow is the number one deck. Now you didn't know they were going to ban Splinter Twin, right? That's why Tawn has fallen so much. All right, Kismet. I just like collecting cards with beautiful artwork. Uh, this is one of them. Kismet is a great card. I'm not going to take anything away from it, but is it really $5? Who cares? It's five dollars. It's legendary. It's from Legends. This is kind of the model I've always been preaching for a long time. Uh, the model is very simple to explain. The model is: Hey, you can have black border cards for people who can pay more money, and they can be collectors' items. But you can have white border cards for people who don't have money and want just to play Magic. So let's say that the fetch lands, let's say, are the reserve list underground seas. You can have like a um, a worse artwork. You, there's ways to make the card functional, but all, but not as desirable. And this is one of Kismet from Legends compared to Kismet from I don't know reprint like Fourth Edition. The difference is huge. Now Wheel Fortune is one of the cards on the reserve list from Revised. So Revised is interesting. I did talk about Unlimited. Unlimited is clearly spiking, Revised is not. From my understanding, there is may, way more Revised than Unlimited, and that is one of the reasons it's going to take so long for this card to spike in price. Uh, the other reason, or one of the reasons it took this card longer than the Unlimited versions to spike in price. There are certain cards on the reserve list in Unlimited or in Revised that are not on, in that's the last time you can get them. There's no reprints of them. That's it. So keep an eye on those cards because they are going to move up in price. They're old and on the reserve list. So Revised might even be an interesting set in 10 years from now. Uh, the Dark. The Dark was honestly one of the most terrible experiences I've ever had. Uh, it is a interesting, it's a very bad set. And this is rated the worst card of all time by Inquest Magazine, and it's not even close. This was kind of the concept of collector's items going up in price. This has no, in my opinion, again, this is my opinion, this has really little utility. This has not the best. I mean, it doesn't even produce mana, to be honest. And that's very bad for the land. I mean, the land has to be very special for it not to produce mana and still be good. And this is not very special. This is very bad. Now, at the end of the day, it's old. People like it. It's kind of funny. Like if my patrons wanted, I have to redo my Patreon account. I think the website, 
website needs work. I have not put work in. I've just made it. Like one of the funny parts, like as a developer, is when someone fundraises sixty thousand dollars to build a website, or fundraises ten thousand dollars to build an app. Like, why don't you build it yourself? Would be my question, right? Or if you are in the business of having a website or having an app, then wouldn't it make sense for you to know how to do it, or you have like a team member who can do it? Uh, because so many business plans in Magic, Pico Trade especially, there's no. I don't think that there's actually like a legitimate plan of action. So Pico Trade, not to uh, harken too much on it, they their plan was to value the Pico Point. A hundred Pico Points would always be a, a dollar. And yes, if they had come close to it, they don't need to exactly be it. But if they came close to it, it would be okay, right? It would be okay. But they didn't even come close to it. A Pico Point is worth thirty. A uh, dollar can get you 333 Pico points right now of value, and it's worth a Pico point is worth one. What's it? 30 over three over tenths of a cent, so less than half a cent, less than one third of a cent, and yet you still have people promoting it. Sickening would be the correct word. All right, uh, the goal. I know that we looked at him previously. He has continued to go up in price. So I'm being told that this is actually far worse than I could ever imagine. That there's a two in front of the black. So I thought this card was bad, and is bad. If it costs one black, it's still bad. Like it doesn't compare to Death Shadow, right? Well, very few cards do. That's why Death Shadow is the number one deck. But look at the power level. But it actually costs two in a black. That's how much Liliana of the Veil cost. That's insane. Like when you think about the power level, and not even legacy, of just modern, and you compare it to it, meh. All right, Morphling. When I grew up, Morphling was the best card ever. It just was the best card. Uh, if you played Morphling, you would win. And it was fun to play with. It was impossible to beat. Um, it was kind of like Aetherling, but better. Aetherling was kind of dominant, but... Back then, you just had control was the spells were a lot better, creatures were a lot less aggressive, and your opponents couldn't kill you with like that much damage. Like the best creature was Lightning Dragon. What's it Lightning Dragon? Is it called Lightning Dragon? It was a 4-4 flying haste for four. And at the end of the day, it was okay. It wasn't the best, but Morphling was the best. And I can see why people would want Morphling as a collector's item. I would want I would want multiple copies of it to be quite honest, and it's a great card. So Morphling, great card. Collector's item. Next, Maelstrom Archangel. Maelstrom Archangel is from Conflex, and it is a rare. You can hear the barking in the background because uh, I guess Norman really likes this angel. I like angels, right? The beautiful angel. It is beautiful in foil. Like here's the key. Alvacin Archangel is going to rotate out and she's going to be really cheap. See, I think she's $3 right now. But imagine her at like $2. That's insane for a Flip Angel. And that's insane for an Alvacin. And I know what you're saying. Yes, a lot of it was printed. Yes, it's a recent set. But in my experience, angels, especially foil angels, have always had a lot of value. And it's not the playability of the angel. It's not the casting cost. It's it's just the fact that they are an angel. Now, it helps that some angels are very good, like Avacyn. Archangel Avacyn is very good. What was the Avacyn the Purifier slash Avacyn? Yeah, Archangel Avacyn is very, very good. I don't want to take anything away from the power strength. But even if it was like the most awful card, like a Chroma, people would still want a foil Chroma. I would still want a foil Chroma. So casual players really don't care about the card. On the So what I found is there's after being a casual player myself, is that a lot of times the card value is not determined on the playability of card, but rather the wantability. And that's a different category. So reanimate, I remember like a bazillion reanimate. So this is obviously the arc enemy one, but I'm gonna talk about that. I think the Tempest one. Everyone knew Wasteland was good, but they put reanimate in the bulk. Now it's like a $20 card, it's insane, right? A lot of things that were bulk that I would just kind of have because no one wanted to trade for it have now just skyrocketed in price and it's quite interesting, very compelling, and also just overall a very intriguing concept where 
if you have enough magic cards, some of them will go up in price just from the sheer amount of spiking prices, but it has to be owed. Now, do I believe this can be duplicated today with today's cards? Blank no. There's no way that you can rely on today's card to do anything similar to what these bulk old cards. Like, I look at it and I say, huh, Kismet is $5 now. I couldn't even sell it for like a penny back in the day. You couldn't even sell it for bulk because no one wanted that. No one wanted it. I should have collected more, but I did not. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.